Hi, I am going to try and make network modeling of supply chains a little bit easier. So let us assume I have a rectangular shaped market and the market has two suppliers, S1 and S2, and um, there are only four customers in the market, C1, C2, C3, and C4. So what I'm going to do in the first option, I am going to try to serve the market using only one central warehouse. So let's say I set up the warehouse here and I call it W. I set up the warehouse here right in the middle of uh, my country. And the warehouse would receive shipments from the suppliers, probably in full truck loads. And the warehouse would then dispatch goods to their customers using parcel service providers. And now remember, the parcel service providers are very expensive. And I'm using these very expensive parcel service providers to dispatch goods long distance all over my area. That's option number one. In option number two, let's assume I create two warehouses. So I set up a warehouse here, warehouse, I call this warehouse one. And then I set up another warehouse towards the bottom that I call as warehouse two. So similar to the first um, scenario, I will have suppliers. Um, they'll have to dispatch to two warehouses instead of one now. So supplier one dispatches here and supplier one also has to dispatch to this warehouse. And similarly, the supplier two has to dispatch to this warehouse here and supplier two also has to dispatch to this warehouse here. So the supplier dispatches have sort of doubled. And let's look at the customer uh, dispatch. So warehouse one will only dispatch shorter distances using parcels. And similarly, warehouse two will also have much shorter distances to be supplied um, using parcels. So what this does typically is uh, both these uh, situations completely change our cost structures uh, of uh, the distribution. So let's see how the cost structure is actually changed. Now in, in option one, I had one warehouse and in option two, now I have two warehouses. So obviously my warehousing cost in option two are substantially higher than the warehousing cost of uh, option one, right? And again, in option two, since I'm holding the inventory at two locations now, my inventory holding cost should also be higher. And most probably the inbound cost would also go up because the supplier earlier were making just one delivery to the warehouse, but in option two, they're making two separate deliveries. So some maybe admin or maybe, I don't know, logistics, but some way to, we can be safe to assume that in option two, the supplier's dispatch cost are higher, correct? But the last two entries make a huge difference. The parcel, which is a very expensive component. Well, in option one, I'm sending the parcel over, all over the country, which can become expensive. But in option two, the parcel service is just within the region. So, so the outbound cost of option two is definitely lower, and this would be high. And the customer lead time also, because the warehouses are closer to the customers, we can offer same day or um, maybe next day delivery much more easier and cheaper in option two as compared to option one. So the customer lead times would be lower here and would also be higher here. So yeah, that, that's the, um, what in, in real life, what we do is we'll map all the customers throughout the supply chain um, and uh, decide that uh, as a nationwide distributor or region-wide distributor, what is the best kind of network that I can create.